the House comes to questions for oral answer, and the first question is in the name of Maggie Barry. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. How did the budget balance the government's programme of responsible fiscal management with extra support for vulnerable families? Honourable Bill English. Now, Mr Speaker, in the first place, the government supported New Zealanders through the recession by borrowing to maintain support programmes uh, because we were confident that uh, even though we were borrowing, we could set a path back to surplus. Uh, the government, the budget also confirms significant investment in programmes to support vulnerable families. This includes $189 million to assist people from welfare into work through work-focused case management and increased support for job readiness and job search. The government's also investing a record uh, $2.9 billion uh, in housing New Zealand, including 2,000 extra bedrooms on existing houses and insulating around 46,000 homes for low-income families. And this week we announced the Kickstart Breakfast Programme, which will expand to five mornings a week <coughs> in decile one to four schools. High decile schools can opt in during 2014. Supplementary. Supplementary question. Maggie Barry. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister of Finance, what other measures were included in Budget 2013 for New Zealanders on lower incomes? Honourable Bill English. Mr. Speaker, the, um, the other measures include a combination of existing proven programmes and new initiatives uh, that are targeted. And I want to acknowledge the work of uh, Tari the Honourable Tariana Turia and the Maori Party in this area. This includes $100 million for over three years for Warm Up New Zealand programme targeting low-income households, $21 million over four years for rheumatic fever <laughs> prevention, $1.5 million for budgeting services on top of the $9 million already provided, a trial in housing New Zealand properties of a warrant of fitness uh, programme for rental housing, and a white wear procurement programme to enable beneficiaries to buy new appliances under warranty, and the government's also investigating microfinance. Supplementary. <laughs> Supplementary question, Maggie Barry. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister of Finance, how is the government investing to deliver better results in health and education? Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr. Mr Speaker, too often in health and education, uh, more and more money is put in as if more money was an indication of success. Uh, in fact, what this government is doing is focusing on achieving better results for the existing spending and, of course, for any new spending. Uh, so we've included, there's a total of $5.1 billion in new operating spending over the next four years, uh, but the key to the use of that money are targets such as more elective surgery and health, uh, better immunisation rates uh, and in education, more young New Zealanders achieving NCA Level 2 and achieving the national standards. <laughs> Supplementary question, Maggie Barry. To the Minister of Finance, what steps is the government taking to further reduce crime and maintain law and order? Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, this is another area where the amount of money spent is not a good measure of how safe our communities are. Uh, when the government came into office, justice sector spending was the fastest rising cost in government. Uh, so we've set targets for reduced crime rates, and there has been encouraging progress. 9% reduction in total crime, 7% reduction in violent crime. Uh, this is coming about from building on uh, sophisticated analysis of what causes uh, crime in our community and police corrections and the courts working together in an unprecedented manner to make our community safer. <coughs> Supplementary question to your Rauf level. <coughs> Tēnāko, Mr Speaker, kia ora tata. To the Minister, uh, to what extent were budget decisions to support vulnerable families influenced by the Ministerial Committee on Poverty, which was established as a result of the relationship accord between the Māori Party and the National Party? Honourable. Uh, Mr Speaker, the uh, Ministerial Committee on Poverty played a key role, in particular the Māori Party uh, played a key role with a strong, <coughs> because the Māori Party brought to that committee a strong focus on getting change on the ground uh, rather than more measuring and more strategies. And that's reflected in the large number of practical initiatives uh, designed to help those who suffer from the most persistent deprivation. 
to the supplementary question to you, Ralph Bravo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, to the Minister, does he agree with the Māori Party that extending breakfast in schools and investing in kids' can are not the only solutions to address child poverty? And if so, what other priorities does he consider worth um, exploring? Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr. Speaker, I do agree with the Māori Party. Uh, in fact, children uh, who are hungry at school are often, as school principals have, have pointed out to me, symptoms of deeper problems in the, in the family circumstances uh, rather uh, than um, simple negligence. Uh, so the government is, that's one of the reasons the government, ha but the re government has proceeded with the program because whatever problems at home, the children need to be able to learn. Uh, with respect to other methods for addressing poverty, uh, we believe the $189 million going into the active management of up to 40 per cent of our beneficiary population uh, will have significant impact because it will assist people get back to work, people who just need a bit of support and guidance and some encouragement to achieve that. <coughs> Supplementary question, Honourable David Parker. Is the Minister aware that income and asset inequality are both rising under Nationals' management of the economy. Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, there's uh, any number of measures of that particular phenomenon. What I'm aware of is that a recession and a weak economy uh, have the biggest impact on those on the lowest incomes with the least assets. And this government has set out in the face of uh, very poor economic circumstances in 2008, 9 and 10, partly a legacy of the previous government. We've set out to protect the most vulnerable as best we could, and actually we've had some success in doing so. Supplementary. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Does he agree that spending $2 million per annum on food in schools while handing over an additional $40 million to private schools is an example of why inequality is widening in New Zealand. Honourable uh, Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, no, I don't. The Labor Party has never understood that every New Zealand child, by right of birth, has a right to a free education. And the money paid to private schools represents the cheapest free education that the government can procure, because it only pays about 30 per cent of the entitlement that every child has. Why does the Labor Party believe that some New Zealanders are not entitled to free education? Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Does he agree with the Prime Minister that the Food and Schools programme is, quotes, here to stay? And if so, does that mean that the high level of child poverty under this government is set to become a permanent feature of New Zealand society? Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes, I do agree with the Prime Minister. But with respect to levels of child poverty, the biggest puzzle in this, on this issue in the last 15 years is how come it got so high when the economy was apparently booming under the Labor Party. And despite the fact of the recession, this government is wrestling with the complex issues of reducing child poverty and having some success. Supplementary question, Jacinda Ardern. Supplementary to the Minister. How many children has Treasury estimated will be lifted out of poverty by this budget? Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, I don't believe Treasury has made that estimate directly, but I can tell the member, I can tell the member that the $189 million committed to welfare will be spent on assisting, for instance, solo parent families off welfare and into work. And every single child uh, who is in one of those families where the parent gains work will be uh, lifted out of poverty. Point of order, I've, I've, now Chris I've now clarified the position about Mr Goff's motion. Uh, he had indeed spoken to the office of the Leader of the House. Uh, I regret any inconvenience. It's perfectly proper for him to put his motion. OK. Did, on that basis, does the member wish to repose? Yeah. Is he going to seek leave I'll, again? I'll seek leave yeah. again, Mr Leave has sought to move a motion without debate. Is there any objection? There appears to be none. Honourable Phil Goff. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I move that this House notes the recent report of the...